the purpose of the trip was to familiarize myself with a little bit of this area, the community where we're going to be staying. The Obviously, the games were very important to me, to be able to watch two games, at least two games, to get to see a couple of the players who will be trying out for the national team, and to try to put some type of organization together of what our practice times will be, what our schedule will look like, the facilities that we'll use. We got to see the practice courts, uh, the workout room, the strength room, uh, meet some of the people that we're going to be involved with the program. So in a, in a short period of time, we have tried to do a lot of things. And the only thing that's stopped us is interviews over and over again. <laughs> the, the month of June will be spent totally uh, trying to be organized for when I return uh, in July. I would like to have... Um, many of the uh, plans in place for what we want to do when we get back. I will meet with assistant coaches uh, from back in the state. <clears throat> We're waiting for a clearance from the NBA right now, which is uh, it's causing many people from other countries similar problems, that there's a potential lockout strike in the NBA. And the last time they had this happen I think it was 1996, maybe? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Right in there, somewhere in there. And when it happened the last time, the NBA drew a line and said no contact at all from any people associated with NBA teams and any players in the league or potential players in the league. Well, every person that plays in Europe is a potential NBA player. So they did not want any contact. We are trying to, and the NBA has been very good in at least listening to us, making our appeals, and hopefully allowing some personnel to come and work with us. But I know at least three other countries who have asked, and the NBA has said no, no, this, this, this. So it's causing a little bit of a delay because some of our people are not yes, not no, maybe. And uh, we're waiting for the answer, which I hope I will get this week sometime when I go back. We have some people locally that we, uh, we've talked to and we'll meet with uh, today before the day is out. Um, and I mentioned that a, a person who I wanted to join our staff, but he will not be able to do that, is Vitali Votapenko, who would have been great and was uh, really looking forward to, to being part of this. But he has a four-year-old child and a brand new baby now. And he didn't feel it would be fair to leave you know, his wife there alone with the one child and the brand new child. So they, they kind of uh, made the decision that he, it, it probably would not be in his best interest to do that. So I'm disappointed because uh, I really care for Vitaly. You know, he played for me and... Now he's an assistant coach with the Indiana Pacers. I thought it would have been a great addition to our staff. Well, I know that they didn't exactly give us an easy opponent to start out with in the first game. And um, for us, it's going to be a lot of watching a video uh, of the opponents because these are new, new opponents for me, for the staff. We don't get to see them on a regular basis. Uh, so we have to identify personnel, we have to break down the tendencies, we have to evaluate what they run on offense, how they play defense, and try to feel comfortable. But that's why we scheduled the exhibition games that we've scheduled along the way, to give the players, our players, a chance to learn what we want to do. Same time, I have to learn with my staff what our players can do, and hopefully the early games the mistakes that we make and the corrections will help us when we get to August 31st so that we're ready to play against Russia in the first game. I had just seen the, the game in Russia the day before, which was uh, unusual that at halftime, uh, one team is winning by 20, and at the end of the game, the other team wins by two. 
and then we come to the game yesterday, which was a very close game. And uh, I thought that the team that won the game in the end, our local team from here, was very fortunate at halftime to be just two points behind. Uh, that shot that was made right before the buzzer made it from four to two. I thought that was a big shot, important shot going into halftime because they could have very easily been down 10 points in the first half, 12 points at halftime. But instead it was only two. So now they come out the second half and uh, I thought the coach, because he knows his team better than outsiders know his team, as I watched the game, there were decisions in my mind. I, I said, I would maybe do this, I would maybe do that. And he did something different. It worked out because he knows the personnel. I might have said, well, maybe I'll substitute now. Take this person out, put this person in. And he did a different substitution. That's because he knows his team and he made the right moves down the stretch. The people he left in the game made good plays for them, they made good decisions. And that's what you become familiar with. The longer you practice, the more games you coach, you trust people differently. You have great trust in this guy to get a rebound, this guy to make a pass, this guy to make a shot. And that's why you have to substitute accordingly. So it was good for me to, to try, and I wish I could have seen more games. The more games, the more experience you have. Did you identify some Ukrainian players? Can I identify? Did you identify them yesterday? Well, we, we went through every player uh, with Sasha Volkov on the paper that will be a candidate yeah. for the national team. So I had a few, I think there were three on each team or yeah. whatever. And uh, we went down, we made a couple notes, and, and we go from there. How are they? We'll find out when they get to practice. Thank you. Okay. <laughs>